Look at this place. It's beautiful. My sons. I've been waiting for you. I know we've come to take you home. Home, yes. I'm on a different path now. This you must face alone. I love you, my sons. Look at that. Remember this place. Hello there and welcome to Complete Games with me James. Hope you guys are all doing well and I'm back with a brand new adventure. This time we're going to tackle Valheim. This is a fairly new title that's in early access at the moment but I think it's quite fitting for a completionist run and I've been enjoying playing this one on the side. So I have started a new world and as we begin, we begin dead with the Valkyrie or this bird carrying us into our randomly generated world. Now we can have other players come in on this map as well and uh, I do hope that I'm going to get a few friends together to tackle some of the harder bosses as we progress but uh, as we come in here all players essentially start on this spot and in the middle of the map is the less dangerous area. So we just bring up our tab menu see the weather's just clearing up here we can see that we've got our skills here and essentially we've got nothing we've got clubs and blocking we've got a, just a tunic and a torch that's all you begin with here and I'll just jump on the spot here you'll see we've just gained one skill point in jumping so essentially we learn new skills by doing them in this game very similar to sort of Kenshi or Project Zomboid if you've played them two games now all of these rocks here represent a boss and we're going to have to defeat that boss in order to get an artifact and progress throughout the game. The first boss that we've got to defeat is the deer boss and we're going to be building up to that one first. But before that we need to get through day one, essentially survive and set up some sort of base camp somewhere. Now this crow here, Huggy, is just our guide. He does, I'll just be dismissing him for the purposes of this because I've already read everything he says but you can see where the Valkyrie has carried us in here we've uncovered some of the map and you'll be dropped somewhere on the center if you'd like this exact map I've made the seed is called Oddworld so just type that into the seed if you'd like this exact map but otherwise it's randomly generated and of course the center of the map is going to be the beginning zone so I've just picked up a stick there we can now learn a new recipe Every time we pick up a new item, it tells us some new things we can do. So we can now craft a club if we combine six of the sticks. And of course, we need to get some hatchets. Food acts slightly differently as well in this game, in that we'll just grab some raspberries. It's not essential that you have food and drink, but you can see we've got currently 25 hit points, but if we eat a raspberry, one of our food slots is taken, and we've raised our hit points by 10. Essentially, we can eat three different things like uh, cooked meat, some mushrooms and some fruit and we'll raise our health points up a lot higher. And as we progress throughout the game there's going to be more advanced recipes as well. Just get rid of Huggy there. Now these buildings as well are randomly generated in some of them. They've got chests so in this one we've got some gold and some arrows. But what I really want to be looking for is somewhere some stone and a few more sticks because we just need our basics of course we can sprint you can see our stamina bar just come up there again different foods that can be consumed can raise our stamina bar and the more we do something the better we get at it the less that that will cost so as you can see here i'm running we will eventually get a point in sprinting there we go so we do improve over time. So what I really need to find is some stones and some pebbles. Then we can craft ourselves a hatchet. Get some more sticks. So yeah, it's picking berries and sticks. 
just like any classic survival game starts. And we're just going to explore our surroundings as well. Okay, there's a few pebbles here around this river. So I should have enough now to craft a stone axe and a club as well. So now we'll be able to get wood a lot easier. And of course a club, be able to ten defend ourselves a little bit better. Of course everything requires skill points so if we're fighting with a club that will need to be leveled up. And we can fight in hand to hand combat. So I'm sure just like in Kenshi people will be experimenting with doing melee build characters building up their points in that manner. But we'll just collect some more wood and explore our surroundings. What I really want to find is a bit of coastline. I feel like setting up my first base somewhere quite close to the shore. As I know we can build boats as well. We'll keep exploring. There's a building here, sort of pre-made, that we could just get started in. Just check if there's any chests in here. Doesn't appear so. This is pretty much ready to go. We could build a bed, put a smithy down, and just something to get us started. But I say I want to head out towards the coastline, if I can find it, and perhaps set up our first base. In it's also limestone around the coastline as well. So, but yeah, more than anything, I think I just want somewhere nice and picturesque. Is our stone hatchet. Now we can whack these wooden chunks. Now when it comes to actually chopping down the, the trees it really does work really well in this game. The physics to sort of stand back and the trees end up falling down on top of other trees that give them damage so it works really well. There we go. As that falls down, stands a chance. The other tree there took some damage. So you do have to be careful when dropping down the trees. But at the same time, you can end up chopping them and getting a twofer. And I like the way that you gather these resources like this. It works really well. Okay, so there's plenty of wood there. And you can see that other tree. I'm not sure if that's part of the same one. Or if we ended up... Yeah, we did take out another tree just here. So we'll grab plenty of wood. Just hit the stump there. Oh, and we got a Graylin over here. It's one of the bad guys. It's only one of the lower level ones because he's got yellow eyes. Go okay, make short work of that. We got some resin. Can use the resin to make torches. So we'll just gather the last of this wood as well as we've chopped it down. So we'll carry on exploring. I say I want to have a look for perhaps a coastline to set up our first base or somewhere near a coastline. I'm still going to have to chop down lots of trees in order to make a really nice starter base. But we need to find somewhere just to be able to put a bed down, somewhere create a spawn point, have somewhere to cook some food. Otherwise we can end up running into trouble and just losing our stuff. See what's over this way. I do like trying to find some high ground, but... Continuing in this direction, I can see Black Forest region. Yeah. Okay, so this is definitely a bit of a tough area. Too tough for us at the moment, but at least we know 
that we're on the border of a black forest area. I think uh, Huggy's just come down to tell us that we're not ready to venture into this woods just yet. So we'll continue in this direction. I thought I saw a building in the distance here. Perhaps we'll find some coastline. Okay, well, night time's coming in and I found a coastline and I kind of like this area. Now this building on top might do for now. Might end up building lower down here near that building, we'll just passing, but this one on the top here is quite close to some trees. So I think it'll make a good base to start in. We can chop all of these trees down around us and gather some resources. Very least, need to get a bed down. Now, it still has part of its roof left. A smithy needs a roof in order to work properly, so if you put your smithy down, you'll have to build a roof over the top of it to access all of its options. But as you can see here, we've learned loads of new things that we can craft. But let's just put the smithy down in this corner, and I think there's enough of the roof here if we get it in it all should work correctly go okay our next objective is to get a bed down and a bed also needs a roof so I am gonna have to replace a little bit of the roof here I think you can see all of the new recipes that are coming in building mechanics is definitely something we'll explore in the next episode because how structures work, there's even foundation pieces going into them, there's really quite an enjoyable building mechanic to this game, but just to get started we'll put the bed down, we'll need to put some wall on top of it, and also in order to sleep in the bed we'll have to put a campfire down. One of the interesting other mechanics in here is that we haven't got a chimney, we need to let the smoke escape, otherwise we will take damage to smoke inhalation as it gathers in the building so you've got to build that in mind if you're planning on cooking indoors you need to take that into account as well okay so let's get a campfire down if I put it on the other side the smoke will be able to escape just put that there there we go so we're able to keep warm the smoke can now escape so we can now get some rest until morning. Fantastic. Okay, well we made it through our first day. We feel rested so we've got a comfort level of four currently in this little house here. Certainly we'll be able to raise that level and have an even better rested level eventually but it's not bad for day one. Now Right behind us we've got a lot of trees we can chop down here so I'm definitely going to have to spend some time off camera lumberjacking all of this forest to build our starter base. I think down here there's some boar. There we go. So let's hunt ourselves some boar for breakfast. Now you can see these wisps of white wind here it just represents the direction the winds blow in we go into sneak mode we are now downwind of these boar so very unlikely they'll actually spot us and there we go sneaking and down wind of that boar definitely gave us the advantage that certainly will come into effect when hunting other prey more advanced if we can get downwind of the deer craft a knife later on should be able to hunt some deer. Of course we're going to get a bow, an arrow. So right now, I want to craft a hoe and experiment with some terraforming. It's one of the things I found is a lot of the surfaces are so uneven it's difficult to build but this is one of the tools that you want to craft very very quickly on. And I just saw a grayling skulking around outside somewhere. I don't know where it's scarped off to. Let's just see what Huggy wants. 
let him go away. Just explaining about the new terraforming tool. Right, let's just get rid of you. Okay. So we've got the hoe. I also want to gather a hunting knife as well. We've got the flint knife. So now when we get behind the boar and the stags we'll do a lot more damage as well. It's much better than the blunt club. Need to hunt for some more flint as well because I want to upgrade our stone hatchet into a flint hatchet. Before we do that, let's just cook up that boar that we just got this morning. Again, we've just got to add a little cooking grill above our fireplace. As you can see, all the smoke rising there. Yeah, I love the fact that if it can't escape, it will gather within the building, causing damage. It's a nice touch. And it's something to be considered when you're building. Now, when the boar is cooked, you'll hear it sizzle. Take long, in fact, there it was. If you leave it on there too long, it will turn into charcoal, which is a resource that we will need eventually, but there's a much better ways of getting charcoal than burning our food. There we go, that cooked meat has just raised our health points by now 40, and it will tick up two at a time for a total of two minutes, so we really have raised our health points with a bit of food and we can combine that as well with some fruit and some mushrooms if we can find them and our health bar drastically increase okay so I've had some luck finding some flint down near the water's edge here there's some flint there and some stones wondering maybe eventually if we might put the uh, place up this end. I've got water on one side. Found this fenced area before. Might be an idea. Okay. Swimming something you have to be careful with. If you run out of stamina, you'll start to drown. Drown pretty quickly. But again, swimming is something that needs to be leveled up as well. Okay, right, get some flint now. If I get plenty of this, should be able to make plenty of flint axes. Chop down a lot of trees. Okay, so before I start building anything, and I'm not entirely sure if we're going to build it just here, I need a place to be able to store our wood. And I want to get quite a lot of wood stacks together. So I'm going to level off the ground around here so I can start stacking the wood. Now as you can see here we've got a few options. Level, raise and make a path. I'm just going to level this area off to the same level of what this shack is. Then I'll be able to stack the wood up. Now you can see this more grey looking stone area in front of us. is more like a bedrock so we can't really go too far into that area but it doesn't entirely level off everything but if you can find a consistently low area so that's much better now it's looking a lot more level let's say it's not 100% we could raise the ground in this area but I've just flattened it out literally just to stick a logging pile down and uh, this is more than enough space venture higher up or lower down it seems like it could be a lot flatter down there but there's plenty of rocks down there we shall see just for now I just wanted to build some sort of area where I can store the logs so as you can see in the chest here I've got a few stacks and they all stack in 50s I hope we can carry all of this at once we might be I hope we can carry a few stacks so we just bring out our hammer and it's going to help me keep track of how much wood I've got spare if I just stack it up at the side. 
I don't really want to build loads of chests just to store the wood in. So instead of that, we'll just turn it into a wood stack. And then when we're ready to use some wood and we start building our cabin properly, we've got plenty of stacks of wood all ready to go. I prefer doing it this way rather than building a base a little bit at a time. Have to keep running into the woods. And especially if we end up building down there, it just seems much better to gather the wood around us up here. And we can pretty much bring it down to where we need to be. A couple more here. So I'm up to about 300 wood now. But we're going to need a lot more. We build something a lot grander. So I'll definitely experiment with building in the next episode. Need to get a proper base down. But for now, there's going to be a lot of grinding and a lot of chopping of trees down between episodes. Gather these rocks as well. But yeah, I'm thinking somewhere around here would be quite nice. Just find that flattest area once we've cleared the trees out. I think I'm happy with setting up somewhere around here. So now we've got the flint axe. We'll just repair it. Just click this on the side. Repair it if we've got our items close enough. Well, let's fell the rest of these trees. Bet this falls down into the lake. Oh no. Oh, <laughs> okay. Well, we got killed by a tree. <laughs> oh, fantastic. Well, I knew you took damage. I didn't know they could kill you outright. I think that pretty much covers part one of complete Valheim. Between episodes, I'm going to be gathering plenty of resources and wood in the background. So when we get started, we can just bash on with building a house worthy of a Viking. And of course, this game does have co-op play. So I do plan to join up with a few friends and people on Discord to take on some of the bosses. So looking forward to definitely doing some co-op gameplay on this, but I really have been enjoying this one in the background and uh, I thought you guys might like this one too, especially if you're fans of Ark Survival Evolved. I think this one's right up your street as well. It does have some taming and stuff involved in it as well, but I'm going to kind of explore that with you as and when we get to it. Next time we're just going to be concentrating on our main build. But of course, let me know in the comments down below if you're playing this one and what you thought. I always look forward to reading them. But until next time, I'm James from Complete Games, and I'll see ya.